Hi everybody, welcome to TIA Now, I'm Clarence Reynolds. What are the fundamental challenges of edge versus cloud, and why does the concept of scaling up SD-WAN technologies satisfy some needs, but complicate others? Well, Saeed Wusal is CEO and founder of Zadita, and he joins us to talk about some possible solutions. Thanks for joining us, Saeed. Thank you for having me. So, your uh, session here at ONS 2018 centered on edge versus cloud. Give us an idea of your opinion of the differences as it relates to deployment architecture. Sure, sure, great question. So, so the way we think of the edge is, um, we, we, we think of it as the next big wave in computing. We've had uh, enterprise computing, we're in the midst of cloud computing, and the next big wave will be edge computing. And edge computing is really all about, we're going to have ubiquitous compute, compute will be in everything we know and own and have, cars, buildings, whatever. Um, it's going to be in an, interacting with a real-time way with the physical world. Um, so you basically are going to now respond to data and, and do things with data that get generated in a real physical world. Um, and we're really going to be building this cyber physical world that Industry 4.0 is part of the industrial uh, fourth revolution talks about. So when you think about deployment architectures and, and how we kind of are looking at, it at Edge, is effectively Edge is an evolution out of the embedded world. And when you look at embedded, one of the things they never had to worry about is connecting these things to the network. The embedded systems tend to be, you know, we've had embedded systems for many years, but they weren't connected to the network. Now that we're connecting them to the network and we're enabling these systems to start communicating with each other and do intelligent things, we need to start rethinking about how we deploy, manage, and secure the applications that do that on these devices. So that's really, I think, the interesting thing is we need to learn from the cloud, because in the cloud, obviously, was a massive growth in terms of how we took applications to the next level. Um, we scaled it to a large number, but that scale is completely dwarfed by the edge, right? And now we need to figure out how do we get all these applications to scale massively larger, enable them to communicate with each other, um, at address security, which is one of the biggest challenges today in edge and IoT, um, but build on the technology that came from the cloud. So we feel, or we believe, the next step is a cloud-native edge. When we scale to the one trillion IoT devices uh, on, on the network, what impact is that going to have to the edge architecture? Oh, massive. Um, uh, imagine uh, what you can do, uh, what denial, distributed denial of service attacks you could do with one trillion devices, right? Um, but also, how do you roll out rapidly software updates to these trillion devices? When you look at uh, the uh, Intel speculative bug that, we, that, was, that came out earlier this year, a lot of cloud providers had to go and update the servers rapidly as they were you know, uh, impacted by the security. I mean, there's maybe a couple million servers in the world in the cloud today, right, at best. That's kind of our estimate. Imagine now you have hundreds of millions of these server-like functions sitting in cars and like car manufacturers ship more than millions of cars per year. How do you go and update these very rapidly and make sure that you, know, you, you can protect the security of these things? So that's kind of one big thing. The second thing is, how do you enable systems to become autonomous and be able to communicate with each other? These trillion chips will not send all the data off to the cloud. There are a lot of the data now will start to be processed at the edge. Um, a car, a self-driving car will be talking to a parking controller or, par uh, or an ambulance will be talking to a traffic light. How do you enable that level of communication and networking is actually something that you know, we're just starting to scratch the surface on how we're going to be building this. What impact will 5G have on deployment architecture? Yeah, I mean, ultimately it's the network that makes the difference. Um, the network is a new computer, as some used to say, right? So I think we need to continue to figure out how to create scalable networking technology. So we think 5G fits into that kind of direction. I think a very big discussion topic is latency. Um, we're seeing this in some of the customers that we're talking to. If you have a robot or you have a, a self-driving car, and obviously a lot of people talk about self-driving car in a 5G context, the ability to rapidly respond to events, it, we, we talk about milliseconds or less. So, so low latency networking and shortest path networking, because ultimately we still deal with the speed of light um, uh, and propagation times, uh, ultimately will, um, you know, I think enable these applications to be more you know, real time, more intelligent, and 5G I think will play a big role in that. What's the benefit of having real time apps at the edge? Well, I mean, I think the interesting thing is the, the way we think of it is, you know, IoT in itself is not new. We've been connecting things to the network for, for many years. Uh, what we do is we have these things send all their data off to the cloud and all the this responding of, you know, interpretation of that data and learning from the data happens in the cloud. And as an architect, that has worked very well. But now as we start to want to build intelligent systems, systems that, you know, can communicate between you, with humans or with each other, um, you're starting to have to rethink about, you know, real-timeness of these applications, how do you get them you know, out there, respond in real time. 
Um, so I think from that perspective, uh, real, it, it is all about real time. And if you look at industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, everybody talks about real time, cyber physical in one context. What's your vision for Zadita as it relates to the um, network transformation ecosystem and its place yeah. in there? Well, um, ultimately it's called the Internet of Things. So there's this thing called the network connection that it has. Um, I think a lot of the current network technologies uh, in the current day and age, we're very focused on cloud-oriented uh, networking, like overlay networks and how to do a, you know data center to data center interconnect and all these type of things. I would say at the edge, it was, I think there's still sometimes a little bit of a too easy approach of like, well, we just give an IP address and we're done. No, we actually have to think a lot more about how to secure the traffic. Um, how do we um, create architectures where you know, a, a system that gets built by manufacturer number one and a system that gets built by manufacturer number two can actually communicate with each other, uh, find each other on the network. So there's, I think, still a lot of uh, opportunity there. And I would say that in the next few years, I expect a lot more focus uh, from the networking community around how to solve some of these edge networking problems. Well, we look forward to hearing more from uh, you and Zadita coming in the, in the future. Thank you, thank you so much Thanks for, for being me. with us. Thank you, thanks. And thank you for joining us. You can see more videos on our website at tianow.org and on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.